Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today I'm responding to Justin Derby who had quite a bit to say about myself and Professor Stick in his video from April 5th, so let's take a look. Now why? Why am I talking about Professor Stick today? Well, Professor Stick decided to draw first blood. They drew first blood, not me. About a month and a half ago, Professor Stick put out a video titled Vice Rhino Teaches a Creationist About Vestigial Organs. And as you can see at the moment, this video has over 37,000 views. Apparently, I'm worth 37,000 views in a month and a half on Professor Stick's channel. Well, don't let it go to your head. His average video gets around 75,000 views, so that's really not that much for him. But I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed that Professor Stick didn't take me on himself. Instead, he had to phone a friend and bring in Vice Rhino to deal with my little video I made about vestigial organs back in December. Again, don't let it go to your head. When he asked me to do a guest video, neither of us had you in mind. That's just the way the cookie crumbled. So let's see what kind of sage wisdom Vice Rhino can offer about my vestigial organs video. Hello there, everybody. If you're a younger creationist like me, then at some point in your time on the internet... I'm gonna go ahead and stop you right there. If you're a young earth creationist, you probably don't want to spend too much time on the internet. That is, unless you're willing to reevaluate your position once presented with evidence. Either that or you're just willfully ignorant or dishonest. If that's the case, then surf on. So Vice Rhino says that you shouldn't spend too much time on the internet if you're a creationist. Well, I'm sorry, Vice Rhino, but I didn't become a young earth creationist because I went to a church and studied under a pastor and I was taught young earth creationism by a man. No, I actually became a young earth creationist after I saw the Bill and I Ken Ham debate in 2014. After that debate, I started researching creationism on the internet. And that makes you the odd one out. I mean, that comment wasn't directed specifically at you. It was more at anyone in the audience who happens to be a young earth creationist. As generally speaking, the more information a creationist accesses about evolution, the more likely they are to stop being a creationist. So the reason why there are a lot of creationists still in 2018, even though you feel like they shouldn't exist at all because of all this information and evidence supporting evolution is because creationists can use the internet as well as you can. Buddy, it was a quick jab for the sake of a laugh. No, you know what? It wasn't funny enough for a laugh. Perhaps a chuckle. Maybe not even a chuckle. Maybe a, just like a small grin. Doesn't matter either way. You're taking it way too seriously. Sorry. That's okay. I forgive you. And I won't even make you do a blood sacrifice to earn my forgiveness. The other claim that Vice Rhino make is that because I'm a young earth creationist using the internet, I have to be either willingly ignorant or willingly dishonest. Again, though, that comment wasn't even directed at you. Just let it go. This is just a simple matter of poisoning the well. You see, Vice Rhino wants you to think before you've ever looked at any of my arguments in the video he's about to respond to, he wants you to think that I'm a bad person and that the truth is beyond me, that I'm just this deceitful liar who's only interested in telling you lies to get you to believe what I believe. Actually, you strike me more as the willfully ignorant type rather than the lying about it type. I really do believe that you believe it and have never thought otherwise about you. But let's see what old Vice Rhino has to say regarding the content of my video. When we're interacting with people in forums, you will have come across the term vestigial organ. Yeah, vestigial organs. You know, those things that don't make much sense if you're looking at things from the perspective of there having been a creator. My personal favorite are the remnants of penile spines on humans. If you're male, go ahead and look at your penis. Right now. I don't care if you're in the office, just do it. Odds are, you have a bunch of little white lumps at the base of the head of your penis. It is quite likely that these little white lumps are the evolutionary leftovers of penile spine. So, as we can see in the clip, Vice Rhino says that the white lumps on a male's penis are quite likely evolutionary leftovers of penile spines. 
And we need to stop right there because I see a fuzzy phrase. He said that they are quite likely evolutionary leftovers of penal spines. Fuzzy words? Really? That's your problem with the penile spine bit? The fact that it's not 100% certain that that's what they were? That's a bit weak. I mean, you say you're a creationist because you did your research, but you obviously didn't research penile spines before replying, so I'll give you this one for free. Not only is it uncertain if the white bumps on your dick are evolutionary remnants of penile spines, but if you went as far as the Wikipedia page for penile spines, you may have noticed that the sentence, however the relationship between the structures is still uncertain, has Citation 21 listed. If you follow the link to Citation 21, you'll find a website for the Kingsley Lab from Stanford University School of Medicine, where they have a whole page dedicated to explaining why they don't think pearly penile papules, which is what they call the little white lumps, are vestigial penile spines. So you didn't even have to do heavy research for this one, you literally just had to click on the first link that comes up for a Google search of penile spines, and then click one more link that comes after the sentence that disagrees with what I had said. Side note, whether or not they are vestigial penile spines, I love the name pearly penile papules. I may have to start a band called Rhino and the Pearly Penile Papules. Also, I had some fun with this on Twitter and asked some people to alliterate with it. First prize goes to fellow YouTuber Cosmological, with the very vigilant Vice Rhino remarkably raging relentlessly, painstakingly proliferates preposterously petulant, potentially pathological, pearly penile papules. And for the record, I did that in one take. Well, I am sorry to break it to you, Vice Rhino, but because you use that phrase, you show that you don't actually know for a fact that the white lumps on our penises are evolutionary leftovers of penile spines. You don't know that for a fact at all. No, I don't know that for a fact. But I do know that that's one explanation for them, and as I stated in my video, it's my favorite example. I didn't say it was the best example, just that it's my favorite, because I'm more than a little immature. But aside from that, let's move on to the next clip because it's in the next clip and the clips after that things start to get fun. Now before I tell you what a vestigial organ really is, I'm going to give you the dictionary definition of what a vestigial organ is. Ah, uh, this is one of my favorite creationist games. The one where they look at the definition of some word and then tell you why that definition is wrong. Here's the real one. Now let me tell you why this new definition can't possibly be true. Here's a tip for you. If you have a problem with a word, be it evolution or vestigial organ or what have you, use the same definition as the scientists when you're talking about it. That will stop you from being wrong right off the bat. Now, this clip by Feist Rhino is pretty bad. He claims that I'm creating a straw man when I say that a vestigial organ is leftover junk from the evolutionary process. But there are multiple things wrong with saying this. One, I was quoting the definition of vestigial provided by the Oxford Living Dictionaries. Yeah, that was the definition that you read. But I'm not complaining about the one that you read. My complaint is with what you said after the definition. Here, let's play it. A vestigial organ is this. When a scientist who is an evolutionist or an atheist comes across an organ in a creature that they don't immediately know what the function of it is, instead of just spending more time and effort researching the organ to see if there actually is a function to it or not, they get lazy and sloppy in their work, and they arbitrarily declare the organ to be leftover junk from the evolutionary process, and they put it on that shelf over there. So my issue is not with the Oxford definition of vestigial, it's with your claim that vestigial is a term used by lazy scientists who don't want to spend time figuring out what an organ or structure is for. And when I say that a vestigial organ is leftover junk from the evolutionary process, I'm referring to the last definition that was provided by this dictionary, which was that it is having become functionless in the course of evolution. Yeah, but you didn't just say it was leftover junk. 
Had you left it at that, I wouldn't have had any major problems with it. But you couched it in the claim that scientists are being lazy when they label something vestigial, which is where I took issue. Your whole video was even called Vestigial Organs Show How Lazy Evolutionists Are. So you not only made a straw man out of what the term vestigial actually means, but you're making a straw man out of my argument while claiming I was making a straw man out of yours, and you're not even showing the full context of what you said, so now you're straw manning your own straw man. It's straw manception over here. So let's move on to another clip and see if, uh, see if the old rhino has anything else to offer us. I rather think it's the other way around, with biologists trying to discover what purpose or function they have and only resorting to the label of vestigial when all other options have been exhausted. Now, Vice Rhino, he's off his rocker here. He claims that scientists only call something vestigial when they've exhausted all other options. And I'm sorry, but that's just not possible because you see, science is incapable of coming to final conclusions about anything, which includes something being vestigial. I don't entirely agree with the way you worded that, but I see the point you're getting at. A better phrasing on my part would have been, after careful examination leaves no other known possibilities, which would leave the door open for future discoveries to label whatever hypothetical structure as non-vestigial. Correction acknowledged. Moving on. It's not possible to exhaust all other options for the simple fact that one, as Bertrand Russell said, science is incapable of coming to final conclusions about anything because it's always subject to being revised and updated. Okay, so earlier you complained that I used a fuzzy phrase, meaning an uncertain phrase. Now you're on my case for using a non-fuzzy certain phrase? Make up your mind, do you want absolute certainty from science or would you prefer a more probabilistic approach? You can't have it both ways. But let's move on to the next clip. What makes sense from an evolutionary perspective would be that there are leftover genes from our past that no longer serve any function, but even if we do someday find that every last little nucleic acid in our body has some crucial function, that wouldn't do anything to cripple evolution. So, Vice Rhino says that even if every little nucleic acid in our body turned out to have a vital function to it, it would not prove evolution false. Correct. There is nothing in the theory of evolution that says there must be junk DNA. Now that being said, because of how evolution works, junk DNA does make sense. So like I said in the original video, as long as there is DNA with no apparent function, that tends to make it look like it was not intelligently designed. But should every last scrap of DNA end up having a function of some kind, that's simply one less argument against intelligent design. It would not actually be evidence in favor of intelligent design. I've heard this line of reasoning somewhere before. Hmm, where oh where have I heard this? Oh yeah, now I remember. On September 30th, 1999, Scott Todd submitted an article to Nature titled A View from Kansas on that Evolution Debate. At the end of this article, Scott Todd wrote the following. Even if all the data point to an intelligent designer, such an hypothesis is excluded from science because it is not naturalistic. Of course, the scientist as an individual is free to embrace a reality that transcends naturalism. So, according to Scott Todd, even if all the data points towards intelligent design and there being an intelligent designer, you're not allowed to come to the conclusion that there's an intelligent designer because that's a conclusion that is not naturalistic. Okay, that's nice. What's it got to do with what I said? I've never even seen that article before, but the way you're talking about it makes it seem like you think I plagiarized it. It has to be evolution in billions of years with no god whatsoever being involved. Vice Rhino tells us that even if every nucleic acid in the human body turned out to have a vital function to it, that wouldn't disprove evolution. Yeah, but that's not because intelligent design isn't naturalistic. That's just because there's no part of the theory of evolution that says there must be a certain percentage of junk DNA. It's really not that complicated. You see, Vice Rhino, intelligent design advocates who believe in the God of the Bible like me are going to tell you that if there is a god who designed everything, then it wouldn't be surprising if it turns out that every little nucleic acid in our body had a vital function to it. That would actually be the expectation, but at the moment it doesn't look like that's the case. You're getting really worked up about this hypothetical. 
So if every nucleic acid in our body had a vital function to it, that would be irrefutable evidence of intelligent design. No, that would be one less piece of evidence against intelligent design. It might possibly count as a small point in its favor, but definitely not irrefutable evidence. An intelligent designer. And yet you say that such evidence would not disprove evolution, even though evolution is based on there being no designer at all. Not true. There are plenty of people out there who believe in a divinely guided evolutionary process. Evolution itself says nothing of whether or not there is a god. It simply is the naturalistic explanation for how we have the diversity of life that we see today. After reading what Scott Todd wrote 20 years ago, it's pretty obvious what's going on. You've ruled God out in advance prior to looking at any data, any evidence. You only allow naturalistic explanations to be arrived at to account for data. Well, then you obviously don't know anything about me at all. I was a young Earth creationist for a good chunk of my life. There was a time when I thought Ken Ham was intelligent. I had an anti-evolutionary website dedicated to pointing out all the flaws I thought were in the theory of evolution. But the more I learned, the more I realized that there really is quite a bit of evidence in favor of evolution, and there really isn't any in favor of a creator. Does Vice Rhino have anything left to offer us at this point? Hmm. Looks like for the phrase vestigial structure, there are about 69,200 results. Not as impressive as the 1.1 million for non-coding DNA, but still quite a bit. But there do seem to be quite a few old ones, though. I mean, right there on the front page, we have two hits from the 90s, one from the 70s, and one all the way back from 1923. So let's restrict our search to 2014 and on just to make sure they're still at it. Look at that, 14,600 results. So your claim that we just label something vestigial and call it a day seems to be somewhat erroneous. Really, Vice Rhino? So Vice Rhino says, my claim that evolutionists label things vestigial and call it a day is erroneous because they're still doing research on vestigial organs. Well, let's look at what you said in the original video that made me think to search for studies on vestigial organs, shall we? When they come across an organ in a creature or DNA that they don't immediately know what the function of it is, instead of spending more time and research figuring out what that function is or ruling out the possibility of any function, they will arbitrarily declare that this thing is leftover junk from the evolutionary process and then file it away and never deal with it again. You are clearly implying there that once something has been labeled vestigial, all research on that thing ceases out of laziness. Hence my search for how many papers are published about vestigial structures. Now I'm confused, Vice Rhino, because you said earlier in the video that scientists only label things vestigial when they've exhausted all other options. And yet, here you are showing us articles upon articles of scientists doing more research on organs that are supposed to be vestigial. Which directly contradicts the entire point of your first video. File it away and never deal with it again. Thank you. The rest of his video is just him hurling insults at myself and Professor Stick. It's slightly amusing to watch, so go ahead and head on over to his channel, he'd probably appreciate the views. But please be respectful if you decide to comment. Uh, let it not be said that I tried to dogpile another channel. I don't want to be the cause of someone being bullied off the internet. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Remember to follow me on Twitter and Facebook and support me on Patreon. See you next time.